All right, so let's start off with this example. So you are going to have some questions like this on your homework, and I'd like you to have some idea about how to approach them, all right? Um, so like I talked about in class, uh, there's something called an electrostatic separator, right? So you might have a um, conveyor belt here, right? And that conveyor belt will carry um, rocks, gravel, and, you know, I, I used quartz and phosphate before, but, you know, you have these rocks on the separator, and they're tossing into each other, and um, they charge each other up. And then they fall down through a large electrostatic field, right, that's created by some capacitor plates. And these things have some um, voltage applied, which means they get a charge, which means they create an, a, um, a uniform electrostatic field in between them. All right. So these rocks are falling through there. And what I'm saying here is that when they finally hit the ground down here, they'll make little piles, right? So a little black pile and a little white pile. And one pile is a distance, say, A from the um, center line, and the other side, the other line is, a, say, 4A, four times as far. So let's say the white ones go this way, and the black ones go that way. So they, they feel slightly different forces, all right? So what I want to find out is what, what can I find out, right? What, what sort of things can I find out about these two rocks? So some of your problems will be given a situation sort of like this, maybe a little bit different, but still, you know, some physical situation, and I want you to tell me everything you can about the things that are, ha that are happening, all right? So I want you to do a little bit of detective work with math. So What are we given in this problem? You know, in each of each one of these um, problems, I want to start you start off with both a rep representation, which I just drew, helping me to explain the problem, and then I want you to tell me what sort of things you're given, what things you know about the problem. Right? You've got um, two kinds of rock is one thing that you know. You've got two kinds of rock. Um, you don't know anything about about them except that they fall through, they fall through a, a um, electrostatic separator. All right. And so type one um, is going to go, it's going to fall uh, distance A. So it's a transverse distance of A, and type 2, it has a transverse distance of 4A. All right. Um, and then what do I want to find? Uh, I mean, this is this is a um, elect electrostatics problem. I want to find basically. Uh, what can can I say? What uh, can be said? About their charge amount and mass. All right. Make sure you label the things that you've got there. Um, so that's pretty much what we know. Um, we could say that the separator has to create an a applied field. So probably I should have put that in there. There's an applied field here, uh, E. We don't know what it is, it's just some E. So I, actually, I don't really want to keep that in there, but um, you know, we want to find Q and M, and we don't want really to have E left over. So uh, we really just want to 
find out as close to possible what we know. We don't really know what that applied field is, so maybe I'll get rid of that. Um, so, I mean, I want the definition, but you know, it's not really a number that we know. So if it was a number that we know, we could just solve the um, problem, right? Um, and then we just say, okay, Q is equal to blah, M is equal to blah, but it's not a number that we know. We just know that it's a uniform applied field. That's it. So we're going to have to just work with what we have, and then we can figure out what we can and cannot know based on what we see. Now we could at some other point um, add in that field and just calculate out a number, but that's no fun and that's not really using physics for what physics is good for, which is learning things about the world, right? You want to get in the habit of using physics as a reasoning tool so that you can learn things about the world and you can design, uh, you can design um, things without having to sit there and calculate everything out. You want to use it to get a good idea about what you do before you calculate things out so you don't have to do too many calculations, right? Um, you want to understand th the world through physics, not just be able to, um, uh, you know, make simple calculations, uh, right? If I gave you the electric field, this is that would be a physics uh, three problem, right? And this is a junior senior level um, electromagnetism class, so. Our job here is to learn things, right? Is to learn how to use physics in a more sophisticated way, right? So we're going to start with the force on the rocks. This is really easy. Um, you know, we know what the force is. F equals uh, Q1E, right? F1 equals Q1E, and it's also equal to MA, so M1A1, right? And um, F2 is equal to Q2E is equal to M2A2. All right, and then we'll want to find the accelerations. So right. So you're going to have to list out all of this stuff, you know, what you're doing what you're doing and um, step by step as you're doing it. That's what you, you're going to have to do that when you're writing up your homework. So the acceleration is the charge to mass ratio times the electric field, right? It's the same thing as saying the force is equal to Q times E, the charge times the electric field strength. Um, right, and we're just finding this transverse acceleration. We don't really care right now about the other bit. Uh, that could end up being really important, right? Um, Except that, you know, it's the same gravity acting on both of them. So it's not like either one of them is trying to counteract gravity, right? It's transverse. This electric field is transverse to the direction of gravity, which is down. So we don't have to worry about the, that particular um, combination of factors. Uh, now we need to find um, find their distances, right? Well, you're saying I already know what their distances. It's 4a and a. Um, but, you know, I need to find them through kinematics. And then set what I find through kinematics equal to 4a and a, and then I have uh, my accelerations, right? So, um, so uh, the distance that one travels, which is equal to a, is equal to um, 1 half a1 t squared, right? And A1 is equal to this Q1 blah blah blah. So we have one half the charge to mass ratio of rock type one, two, and then I um, have E and T squared. And I have something very similar for D2, right? Uh, it's one, you know, four A in this case is equal to one half times the charge to mass ratio. Let's see, oh, I've got room, excellent. And times t squared. So I've got these two distances. I know what, and it can relate them through this A, right? So in fact, I could, and what I propose to do is just take the ratio, right? Um, 
So if I take the ratio, um, that would be, uh, let's see, uh, 4A over A, right, is equal to um, one half will cancel, E's and T's will cancel, so I have Q2 over M2 over Q1 over M1. And so that means that the charge to mass ratio of two is equal to four times the charge to mass ratio of one, all right? So can I do any better than that? That's my next question, right? Can I use something about these rocks to find, um, to relate Q1 and Q2? And the answer is probably not. So if I don't know the size of the rocks, right, it, and if both, if I knew that both both were the same size, right, then maybe I could say something. If I knew they had the same number of rocks as well, I don't know that they have the same number of, of rocks. Um, if they had the same size and number, probably I could I could find um, I could find this. Actually, if it just had the same number, I could relate Q1 and Q2, right, because the rocks are charging each other up, right. But I haven't said that I have the same amount of phosphate, the same number of phosphate rocks as I have um, quartz rocks. So I can't say anything about that, right? So I can't do anything to relate Q1 and Q2. If I did have some way to do that, then I could find um, M1 and M2 as well, and I could know everything about this problem, right? Um, and, but I don't, right? Um, in fact, if I knew that, then if I could find these guys, right? Um, if I could find M1 and M2 because I knew Q1 and Q2 were the same and so forth, at least I could relate those. I wouldn't have the actual, um, what are those things called? I wouldn't have the actual magnitude. So, uh, that's all the work there. And then I have to answer my problem, right? So I've done my work. Now I have to actually answer that problem. And so what is the answer? Um, the answer is I can know um, the charge to mass ratio of type two rocks is four times that of uh, the charge to mass ratio of type one rocks, okay? That's what I can know. What I can't know, I can't know all sorts of things. One, I can't know M1 and M2, I can't know the mass. I can't know um, the charge. And I can't know um, what the re relationship between the mass of the rocks is, and I can't know what the relationship between the charges on the rocks are. Okay, so I can't know any of these things. I can only know the ratio, the relationship between the charges and mass ratios. Um, just through this particular case. Now, that's not going to be necessarily true. Maybe other things can be known when you have a different sort of setup, right? And you're going to see some different setups like this in the homework. Maybe not the first homework, right? But maybe the fifth or the seventh or the twenty-third, twenty-first, right? And I have several, several questions like this on your homework. So please, please um, get a good grasp on how to do things like this and then you'll be able to do well on the homework and if I'm having questions like this on the homework you can think that you know with the three tests over the course of the semester there's like there's likely to be at least one of those on one of those tests right so um, you know get a good idea about how to reason with physics and you'll do really well in the class and that's actually where I'm going to see you soon. So I'll see you in class. Bye now.